All right, welcome back. A uh, quick little news of the day video here for you guys. Uh, we actually had quite a bit going on in the past 24 hours, and so without further ado, I'm just gonna get right into it. Um, starting off with probably what's gonna end up being the most popular story of all of these is the departure of Sokska or Sox, uh, from OG. He, of course, was uh, one of their coaches. Uh, of course, they've had numerous coaches throughout the years, mainly Misha being their head coach as of late. Um, and yeah, he's departing from OG, and so now, uh, OG slowly but surely, a lot of members are leaving, a lot of members, it doesn't sound like anyone's getting kicked, but more and more it's looking like this OG roster is going to undergo a complete shakeup in this upcoming season. Um, of course we had rumors that Seb was going to be retiring, I mean he himself put out a statement saying that this was going to be his last uh, tournament. Uh, we have No Tail who, for, from what I know, No Tail doesn't look like he's retiring, but then the only other member left is Thompson, who we know has talked about maybe taking some time off. He does have a daughter now to take care of, so it would make sense. And if the whole team is kind of coming apart, I could really end up seeing this being a completely new OG with maybe just no tail staying. We have to see how it goes, but uh, get, like I said, given the departure of a lot of close members to the team, like I said, Sokska, who's been close to the team for such a long time. Uh, Sokska, who of course was only there for this last little while that he wasn't part of the TI9 run. Uh, he seemed like he was a really close part of the team, like family-wise, it really seemed like a family bond. And so I really couldn't see him leaving unless it was the entire team coming apart. Again, we don't know yet to be sure, but I would not be surprised to see a completely new five-man roster representing OG in this upcoming DPC season. So yeah, we'll see how that goes. Uh, next up, Talon Esports are potentially coming to Dota. Uh, this could be end up being a rumor, but it would be a pretty cool thing to see because um, of course, uh, with how volatile the Dota 2 Pro scene was for such a long time when it came to real lack of sustainability in the Tier 2 and Tier 3 scene, it was really risky for organizations, notably big organizations from other esports such as League of Legends, um, Overwatch, stuff like that. It was really risky for other organizations to come into Dota because there was no funding whatsoever for any team that wasn't attending majors, attending the international, and etc, etc. Well, now that we have an actual steady DPC format, even though I don't think the funding is as high as it should be, um, it is more stable for some bigger organizations to come in, maybe pump more money into the scene. And yeah, so Talon Esports, uh, one of, again, like I had mentioned with other esports, uh, an organization that's quite popular, uh, potentially come to Dota 2. So that's exciting because it means that hopefully some more organizations are here to come and we get some more sustainable Dota because I think one of the real uh, I think it's a perk of Dota, and I, I don't know if it's one that's necessarily going to go away when we have more organizations, but Dota 2 is one of the most volatile uh, pro scenes. You know, it, it, every single tournament, there's a whole bunch of teams that are moving players around. Um, it's very common for teams to completely dismantle themselves after a TI. And so maybe uh, with some bigger organizations coming into the scene, that'll kind of stable everything out while still having some changes here and there. Of course, not every single team is going to be super satisfied with all their results. But again, all speculation, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, next up. Um, so a couple weeks ago, we, of course, had uh, pretty much the ent uh, entire dismantlement of the bait roster. Uh, where they had every single member of their team either being kicked or leaving, uh, including Dendi for a day, <laughs> which didn't make sense. And that was actually because Bait um, was supposed to be eliminated from the DPC after season one. They were in the bottom two of the lower division. They were supposed to be relegated out, having to re-qualify through open qualifiers. But what they ended up doing uh, was joining with another DPC team and combining their organization with that team because they owned a DPC slot. And so they kind of uh, cheesed their way back into the DPC, but it ended up paying off because they were able to stay in it. And then what happened is, um, I guess how it ended up working is the player agreed to give Bait the slot, but he didn't actually give the slot to them. He was just loaning it to them. However, in the agreement, it was said that they were supposed to be given to Bait. And so Valve saw this and they must have investigated at least a little bit uh, and noticed that there was some wrongdoing there. And so he was forced to give the DPC slot to Bait. So now Bait is actually the sole owner of the DPC slot like they had initially agreed. And there isn't that dispute anymore with um, the owner of the DPC slot not wanting to give it up anymore. So yeah, uh, Bait still in the DPC, whether or not they should be, they had a better season last, uh, last go of it. But uh, of course they have a completely new roster now and we'll have to see how that goes. So. Uh, staying in the Eastern European region, we have Namiga uh, bringing in Vanscore, who was previously on Empire. Of course, Vanscore has been around the pro scene for such a long time. 
Uh, he's been playing professionally since 2013, and he's going to be joining to play position five. It's unclear whether or not he's going to be the captain of the team. Of course, he's the only new player that they've had since the TI-10 qualifiers, but uh, he, it is quite common, of course, for the position five player to be the captain. So he also has been playing a long time, so it's not like he's a rookie or anything like that. So uh, yeah, hopefully they're uh, going to do a little bit better this season. They are still a lower division team. So I'm sure with this addition, the, the team itself is hoping to improve as they finish kind of middle of the pack of the lower division. So of course, they weren't quite eliminated from the DPC, but they also weren't getting the results they wanted to get them upgraded to the upper bracket. Uh, of their region so yeah hopefully that works out for them and van score again another player who's been around for a long time hopefully he gets some more sustained success uh sometime soon and uh last little bit of news or not really news but just something i thought was interesting so after further reading of course we had the dpc uh format that was kind of leaked but not really leaked it was an official statement that just wasn't announced yet uh about changes to point distribution uh mainly focusing around that um, and after further reading, it is clear that they have not made any changes to the major format, which is kind of disappointing. Um, I think if I had to rank all of my changes that I wanted to see, uh, one would have been point distribution. So I'm really, really glad they got on top of that. However, in a video I'm going to be making in a few days, we might see that maybe it wasn't as impactful as people were thinking, but I think it was a change that needed to happen. Um, my number two would have definitely been the change of the major format. I think it's really clunky how you have... Uh, basically two group stages and then some teams that don't even participate in either of them and that just wait in the upper bracket i find it really weird and then the last thing being the monetary prizes i think the prize pool in general across the entire dpc is far too low it's even lower than what it used to be even though the game has only grown at least from a viewership standpoint and a um, crowdfunding standpoint the prize pool for ti is going up and up every year but the overall dpc prize pool is lower than it was five years ago which is ridiculous so yeah uh, no changes to any of the uh, major formats nor are there any changes to the slots given of course uh, that means that there's going to be four uh, major slots for western europe and china three major slots for eastern europe and southeast asia and then two major slots for both of the americas north and south so yeah uh, that's going to do it for news of the day. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you guys think about any of this stuff in the comments down below. Sources for everything I've covered today in the description as per usual. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll actually have another video posted up tomorrow. Uh, no videos on Sunday though. So <laughs> uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow with another video. Bye.